record here. All right. Looks like we are recording. Welcome, All everyone, right. to the very first ever Amuse at Home. This is a unique and exciting time for us and artists all around this great world. Uh, and of course, the Amuse Art Fair has been going on for five years, and this is their first virtual uh, exciting uh, uh, sort of at home version, so to speak. Of. I'm just going to keep repeating the same words. That's okay. Matt, what we call in the world marketing, just constant yes. repetition of the same thing. And mm -hmm. I have had the unique opportunity of uh, being here with you. Obviously, I'm with the Alamo Draft House. We've been uh, proud supporters of the Amuse Art Fair for years and years and excited to be a part of this today. Uh, I have been uh, becoming great friends with Matt over the uh, uh, fast going sensation known as emails. Uh, and I'm looking forward to finally uh, meeting with him and talking about his great art, which uh, I've actually had the opportunity to peruse through his website. And I'm looking forward and hopefully all of you will as well. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, anyone who's watching, uh, Matt Muirhead's with us today. Bravo, thank you for coming Hello. and joining with us. Pleasure so, to be here. Uh, give us uh, the who you are speech. For those of yeah. us who are joining and have never seen your face before, talk a little bit about who you are and, and how you got into this crazy world known as art. Mm, who is Matt Muirhead? That's the Let question I'm asking pipe. right there. I grab my pipe. <laughs> it's, it's more of a philosophical question than it is a general <laughs> question right there. Like, yeah, inward, who are like, you? I'm just like a regular person, you That's, know? I have, I have exciting, I have an exciting life these days. Being at home in my studio is very different from my usual life of being at home in my studio. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I'm English originally, moved to the States when I was about 11. Um, uh, now I live in Baltimore, uh, right. but I've lived kind of all over the place. I lived in Japan for a while. I lived in the Detroit area for a while, Chicago, uh, a little time in New York. Um, and uh, yeah, now I live in Baltimore and I've kind of like made my art uh, sort of speak the Baltimore language. And uh, it's been it's been really exciting because this place, you know, Baltimore is very much like it's sort of in love with itself and ah. its charm and and this kind of thing. And for an artist, you know, that kind of uh, cultural moment, cultural happening is like uh, you can really juice that and have a lot of fun with it. So, uh, you know, I try to make art that is a lot of fun. I dropped out of art school and um, uh, no regrets, you know, Good. Um, and um, yeah, I have just, uh, you know, I've always done art on the side as much as I can uh, while having a job, but, you know, uh, moving to Baltimore, uh, after a couple of years, I was able to just uh, do art full time and not have like a day job that sucked me dry. And uh, now, now my art just uh, sucks at my soul. Yep. So that's Creativity great. runs rampant in the... Uh, yeah at the house there right now it does so has uh, has art always been a part of that journey that you've just talked about right there you had said a little bit about yeah. dropping out of art school art here and there do you remember kind of your first yeah. piece that you did that sort of said i want to kind of keep doing this uh you know it was uh flip books in in uh like math class uh -huh. you know i do these horrible yeah uh, flip books of people getting their heads cut off or something you know what i mean just show them to friends pass them out just give them out and stuff and that was a, like a thrill just to, to for me to do something with my hands that somebody sees and is just delighted by so really that's you know that's the spark that's great yeah. and so that eventually led to kind of what you're doing now and i had a chance to sort of look through on your website but what is your preferred medium? Let me ask that question. Let's start yeah. with the base level and then we'll work our way up there. I've, you know, I've gone through a lot of different things, but uh, I, I love screen printing. I got into that process. I was taught that in high school, like a vocational technical class. And it was like, you know, 15 years before I decided I'm just, I know how to do this. I could do it on my own. Mm. And, um, you know, so uh, it's screen printing with a lot of sort of like throwing paint at the canvas and letting things drip and having fun, just pushing color around. And, um, and then, you know, and then screen printing sort of gives it a kind of foundation, uh, you know, a rendering of that is recognizable and 
you know, I, I love to play with scale. I love to, you know, do surreal juxtapositions. And, um, you know, I do, you know, the, an artist these days is probably doing a lot of uh, portraits mm -hmm. and they're probably doing some pet portraits too, if they're willing to uh, go that low. And so I have sort of, um, so doing all these pet portraits, screen printing being the medium that it is, uh, you know, I make screens of these pets and then I'm like, I have all these screens of all these pets now. And so I have incorporated those into my work. I'm very practical. Yeah. With, uh, you know, these things, they look fantastical, but they're actually, uh, you know, in the, in the nuts and bolts of putting together an image or something, they're kind of practical decisions. Well, let me, I'll tell you right now, I could, I could make a post on our social media feed about uh, the current challenges the world is facing and hopefully get one or two people that would interact. A photo <laughs> of my at-home cat just lying yeah. around uh, tends to blow the medium up right there. And so maybe you've oh, come across like something uh, yeah. You know, maybe I would say that you're on the, the forefront of what's popular and that sort of thing right now with your pet portraitures. But yeah, more than that, I mean, if looking through your website right now, it's more than just a pet portraiture, but you're actually taking uh, someone's loved one, someone's, uh, someone's family member and creating yeah. sort of a whimsical story that goes along with it there. Yeah, uh, you know, and tying it to the city. Right. tying it to this place that people have love for. So it's, you know, it was, um, it's funny. It was kind of, uh, uh, feels like kind of a no brainer. I'm surprised more people aren't doing this. So how did that first one start? Did someone say, I'd love to have my uh, cat in this sort of setting or did you try it out with one of your own animals first? Well, I, uh, let's see if I remember rightly, you know, I was, I had made a screen of just uh, some row houses and I had, I think I had a zebra, ah. you know, and I was like, oh, I'll just pop a zebra up there. Great. That's cool. You know, like there's this great juxtaposition. It's, you know, it, um, I remember, uh, actually I'm a big fan of sci-fi, right? Okay. And so, uh, 12 Monkeys Yeah, uh, is this great film. And the juxtaposition they had of like animals in this sort of post-apocalyptic environment was like, I was just blown away by that. And so actually that was my first thought was like that the, the, the animals have escaped the zoo. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I'm a big fan. I was always watching like the Saturday Shocker movie, uh, mm -hmm. you know, back in Detroit, you know, and the Saturday afternoons they had some, uh, you know, monster rampage movie or something like that. And so, you know, it, it all just sort of filtered down into this, you know, well, the pets are taking over. You know what I mean? They're the ones that are destroying the city. It's actually a very, a, a negative critique of the, uh, of the whole <laughs> cat phenom, you know? I don't know. I mean, I think you've done something really impressive in the sense of you've taken this idea of large and oversized animals, so to speak, as yeah. like the city background, where some people would just say, I'm going to do some t-shirts, I'm going to do this, and, and you sort of dabbled in that, I saw, but you've yeah. gone to the next level of portraits, meaning that you're reaching out to people and saying, why don't we create something special, unique for you? Do you find yeah. that request, that next step, a challenge? You know, Because creating for yourself, you can be your own critique, but then yeah. when you bring a second or third person into it uh, especially with someone that has a heart associated to that yeah creature is that challenging well you know the challenging thing is when it's like well i want my cat riding on uh, the back <laughs> of a volkswagen and uh, like zooming through the universe with uh you know tentacles for headlights sure uh, you know what i mean Classic uh, I like, request there yeah i try to keep things simple I try to like pare down the thing that people are requesting. So, you know, um, but most people, you know, I, I'm kind of a known quantity mm -hmm. in Baltimore, thankfully, which is, uh, which is kind of amazing. You know what I mean? But I, cause I am a, uh, I, I never thought I would, um, all I wanted was to just make paintings and sell them. And that's my simple dream uh, for my life. And, um, so the fact that I can do this is incredible, you know? So what do you, when you're working with a customer, and this will be yeah. my last sort of portraiture question because I've got a bunch of others for you as well, but 
what do you prefer when working with someone? Someone who knows what they want or someone who's very vague? That was my point. I didn't finish it. I, what I want is for somebody to have known my work and seen my work and say, I love what you do and you do that. And then that's what gets the best results. Yeah. You know, I mean, if somebody's like, oh, you know, it's got to be the moon, it's got to be sunshine and rainbows, I can work within, you know, I love that kind of direction uh, because there's a precedent in my work for all the things that they're requesting. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, my comfort zone is like, you know, big. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, and I, you know, I don't even take a deposit with those pet portraits because I've never had a person. No. Say, uh, yeah, it's not what I wanted. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and I'm sure they're probably writing to you every other day. It's like, is it ready now? Is it ready now? Are we ready? You know, those <laughs> well, guys I, are typically excited uh, to I have give my, their portrait ready. I'm on this stuff, you know, like, like basically, you order something in the spring, it's going to be ready in the summer. You order oh, I like the, that. Yeah, I mean, in the fall. Um, but yeah, it's it's so awesome. I cannot tell you how great my life is. And, you know, it's really, uh, it's, it's, I've been a little depressed actually, because I haven't gotten to do my, you know, I do a lot of festivals and fairs and, you know, Baltimore has, you know, in, in the season, you know, it's got a couple every month that I, that I try to do. And I got nothing this year, man. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling it. You know? So how has that changed you as an artist? Do you find yourself needing to be more creative in terms of marketing yourself out into the world? Or are yeah. you finding yourself more inward and exploring new avenues that you would want to bring to the world once it reopens? What are you looking at yeah. these days? These days, I've got a one and a half year old. Ah. I, uh, he just sucks all the time up. <laughs> so, you know, I've been We're recording this, by the way, for future posterity, by the way. Yeah, so uh, so uh, well, as he gets I older. <laughs> I, uh, 18 year old Tom, watch your dad. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I, you know, I've, man, I, you know, it's all, it, it all feels like, you know, the pandemic is sort of, embroiled it you know and rolled into my life as it's evolving being a father and all that stuff so it, it you know it all it would be weird without the pandemic i'd probably be struggling um to find time and to really have the mind space to get into this so you know i've been like fine with just sort of laying low this year you know i try to keep my instagram updated with new works and i you know i've got i've always got like a stack of paintings that i'm working on you know and i'll get a day or two to really throw some paint around um you know the, the thing about screen printing and i i could take you outside i could show you all my screen i've got like hundreds of screens uh that i've made you know over the past uh 10 years 15 years or so and you know that it's easy for me to just get a couple of hours and say all right i'm going to go out there grab these images and put them together you know in different ways uh right now and and get some things established that i can just pull out when i've got a half an hour or an hour and i can just do some little things on them so i've adjusted my life to you know have not having all all week yeah, <laughs> a week of 10 hour days to kind of like make the work, you know. So where are you drawing your inspiration from these days? Um, man, you know, I, uh, I, you know, it's funny. I, I think about just things in my life, really, uh, you know, and I watch old monster movies and stuff. They're still, they're still exciting. Here, I'll show you this one. I'm ready. So, you know, I love, um, like thrift shopping, going to the thrift stores, uh, you know, buying pieces of art. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of that on Facebook Marketplace, but this, you know, there's nothing that compares to hitting the, sure. hitting the thrift shop. So this is one of the last things I picked up while the thrift stores were open. And it's like a big, it's this huge oh, yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've added the Creature from the Black Lagoon Absolutely. in there. Absolutely. You know, so this is like the, just the kind of, fun thing that I'm doing. Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of different things that I do. So I, I always feel like there's something I can I can pull out. You know, I love I love old pieces of art like that that are gonna sit in some 
70s panel living room. Sure. You know what I mean? And then there's a monster sitting in the corner <laughs> there. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. Just, my, that's, that's what gets me going. I'll tell yeah. you. you know, one of the artists that I, I was a fan of for a long time was uh, Wayne White, who, who oh, did totally. a little bit of that yeah, yeah. with the, the language that he would put uh, up on yeah. the sort of the classic 70s, uh, you know, uh, scenery images or portraits yeah. and that sort of thing, which were pretty Oh cool. my God, his, uh, he, he was big, uh, Pee Wee's oh, Playhouse. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I grew up with that stuff, you know, and I love the kind of madness of it, yeah. you know? But, there, you know, what's interesting is that there is a madness, but there's this like unbridled creativity that goes along with it as well. I mean, it's yeah. things that, you know, we saw for Pee Wee's Playhouse that I'm not sure we've ever seen really again, you know, it's that yeah. sort of like wildness that I love. And, and a kind of practicality. Sure, yeah. You know, that, like that when he's just like, oh, you know, I usually just kick through that, that piece of art and just use the frame, but uh, you know, I'll paint on that piece of art. It's just like, yeah. it's, a, it's an obvious decision for him. You know what I mean? Sure. It's not even something that required, uh, you know, a lot of um, a lot of thought. It was just like, huh, huh, that's right there. It's staring me in the face, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. Do you, do you find that some artists are purely inside of the box, or are you finding within the circle of folks that you're working with and surrounded by within Baltimore there that that creativity that that let's use that frame is happening? Uh, and and I think a follow up question to that would be. Do you find inspiration from folks within the uh, the art world that you're in there in Baltimore? Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's some great artists in Baltimore. Um, you know, and uh, I, uh, it's funny. I, you know, my I do a lot of kind of multimedia stuff um, in addition to just painting. You know, paintings like the primary mode uh, that I make money. You know what I mean? But uh, there's a lot of things here in Baltimore, like the um, what's it called, the Cranky Festival in okay. uh, Creative Alliance, which I've done that four or five times. And, um, you know, that's where you, you take your painting and you put it on this uh, panor moving panorama that you can, you know, crank and it cranks the story. I wish I, I should have brought one of those out to show you, but um, I have a few of those. I actually did a Zoom class uh, last week where there was a, a pre-cinema technology class from the Baltimore Polytechnic. And um, I, you know, showed them my, my cranky and we talked about a little bit of, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, you know, um, there's some great artists in Baltimore, uh, you know, the Black Cherry Puppet Theater in Baltimore. Um, I, have a, I have a puppet Instagram, you know, that's, an, that's yeah. one cool thing about um, sort of the current mode is, uh, you know, with the pandemic and sort of everything flocking to a virtual space is, um, you know, I've got like four Instagram accounts, one for my painting, one for my music, one for my puppets, one for my baby, wow. you know? And um, it's just, it's so cool to just have uh, that kind of um, uh, instantaneous connection with an audience. You know, I feel like my festivals and stuff help me build that audience because, you know, you meet, you meet somebody in real life and you, there's a connection there, but, you, but that connection can migrate online and be just as powerful, even if you only met the person once, yeah. you know, the flesh. So... Um, it's an interesting time to be an artist, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so uh, talk a little bit about what your day sort of looks like. Uh, you know, a traditional day for Matt Muirhead when he yeah. sort of gets up. Is there uh, a designated time for the work that you're doing? Is there a designated time for all the Instagrams? Is there, how do you put everything that we've just been talking about into a typical day? Into a life, yeah. Um, a lot of it revolves around the baby schedule these days. Sure. Uh, he take, you know, I get up with him seven ish. Uh, I usually make some coffee and breakfast. Um, you know, sc scroll the day's horror. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sure. And um, you know, uh, usually I can get some time in the morning um, when Mackenzie, my wife, takes him. You know, they go play outside or something. I get a little time in the morning. I might get a little time in the afternoon. Uh, if I if I drink coffee around six p.m., I'll get the evening. You know, otherwise okay. I'm just out. You know. Yeah. But um, it varies. It totally varies. You know, sometimes I won't paint for a week. 
you know, and then I'll just, you know, I, I actually, it's funny, my studio, it, it kind of looks trashed again a little bit, but I, we cleaned it, like, it took two days to clean it uh, last weekend in preparation for this, because I'm like, oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta get something going here, what am I gonna do? Um, so, uh, yeah, we cleaned it up, and I've been, I've been working a little bit the last couple of days. What, what are some surprises there in your uh, studio? Uh, do, you know, do you, do you turn a um, uh, uh, radio on or any music? Do you have uh, old movies playing in the background? Uh, what do you use as creativity in your studio there? Um, well, I, I play a lot of my own music. I've okay. got like a lot of synthesizers and stuff like that, electronic music. I, I got this instrument right here, I'll show you. Uh, so this is like a, a six player kalimba. Oh, wow. like, you know, it's... And they're all like different tunings and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, you know, so I listen to my own jams. <laughs> you know, I, like that. Uh, I jam with friends and stuff. And, you know, I'll listen to the stuff that we've made. Uh, and that's, you know, that's fun for me. But, you know, I love all kinds of music. Um, I don't really have, uh, I don't really. You know, I feel like I get so little time to actually really focus and spend in here uh, these days. You know, it's just a temporary moment where the kid is just really like, you gotta watch, he's just gonna, he's gonna eat a rock or, you know, choke on a thing. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah, that so, doesn't change, by the way, over the years, just FYI. Oh, God. Uh, the rocks yeah. are still tasty after <laughs> all of those years. Yeah, uh, well, so I, you know, I try to, uh, I try to just get down in here and focus. I don't really, I don't, it feels like I don't even have habits anymore. I am just grasping at time and stealing it from my wife or however I can get it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, do you, have you found any changes or new inspirations with the, uh, with the birth of your child? Um... No. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, you know, I, I accept on, honest answers here. For yeah. All of this, um, so. you, oh, you've man. spoken so highly or spoken about your time right now and everything that's been going on with the birth of your child. And so I just didn't know if you were sort of like, this is a, uh, maybe a new chapter in uh, Matt Muir. It's, in your head, sort of. Man, it's hard. It's hard. You know, I, it's funny. I've, I was just complaining to my wife about this the other day. Like, you know, I've been work. I've been a working artist for a long time, and I have done so many different things, and gotten halfway decent at so many different things that now I can start bringing those things together into kind of more unified multimedia projects that have music in them, that have visual stuff, and you know, and it takes so much more thought and focus and experimentation to really pull something off, and man it's hard it's hard to find that kind of time so my ideas are way bigger than my uh my the time i have to pull them off and i know you know i feel like that's temporary you know we'll get this we'll get this thing going but you know it's uh it's real hard it's real hard i never really wanted kids and uh, you know but i'm now i got one and you know and a potential future helper in these big it's, projects that you have it's all about legacy. You know, sure, the memory sure. hole is vast, but you don't forget your dad. That's right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, your uh, child will have stories of uh, you being uh, tucked away in your work shed and your studio uh, forever yeah. and ever, and then just coming home for uh, breakfast and coffee, and that's it. I am hoping, you know, I like my studio at home. You know, I've, I've always kind of had my home studio as like a, an integral part of my life so that things, you know, so there is no break for me. We, we've talked about me getting an outside studio, but um, man, you know, I would just miss it. I would sure. just miss, you know, just grabbing the coffee and then going in there for a few hours. Uh, you know, I'm trying to find things that he can partake in. And, you sure. know, as a one and a half year old, it's tough, you know. But, you know, over the next few years, he's going to have a little more ability to partake in these things. And so I'm hoping I can have like a little partner and, you know, my work will be steered into 
things that kids can partake in. You oh, know what oh. I mean? So uh, yeah, I'm really hope I got in fact I got him this. Uh, I ordered this synth for Christmas. It's the called the split split blocks, and it okay. is like full on synthesizer for like a one year old that you can wow. throw it through them and it's fine, you know. But it's got all the all the bits that make a synthesizer, but it's for kids. So uh, you know, I'm hoping that we can we can jam. You know, we, we can go. get things together. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, so I guess that's one way that I've changed things is because I'm I'm looking for a way in to sort of, you know, grab that funnel and take what I do and get it get it into his hands, sure. you know. Absolutely. It, yeah. it, going back to that idea of legacy right there again. So yeah. I mean that's yeah. huge. Well, so you, you have uh, you know, we're we're in your studio right now. Is there some pieces that you could throw yeah. on the screen so, for uh, us to check out? I generally work on unstretched canvas. So this is something that I was working on the other day. I love uh, it. Yeah, uh, you know, I love the idea of witches. And, okay. you know, uh, so this is like, uh, you know, like the whole hex on the hex on Trump. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I know. So, oh, yeah, you know, we'll just take DC in there <laughs> and then we'll have these witches flying over DC and then. You know, it's funny, art for me, um, uh, you know, I'm a very sort of skeptical person. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, like, you, you know, you'll find UFOs and stuff in my work. Uh, uh, you know, I don't necessarily think I believe in UFOs, right? Uh, I don't really believe in anything. But, um, you know, as an artist, we get to play with all these things sure. and kind of manifest them in a way that's really interesting. So, um, you know, like... This is my, I just finished this. So I, this is an, uh, like a, a, a canvas that I took out of a oh, yeah. frame that I got at a thrift store. So that's Jesus. I think this is the road to the Is that road. a lightsaber he's got in his hands there? Yeah, he's got a lightsaber and like it's that. kind of explosive. And then there's like a Death Star. Uh, there is a Death Star. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because he's a fictional character. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, you can create them any way you want to right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is uh, not finished yet, but it's going to be like, you know, it's, I'm not a sports fan at all. I, right. I, I hate professional sports, but this is a, this is going to be an Oriole. He doesn't have his color yet. Um, but, you know, man, do I feel for the sports fans this year. Sure, absolutely. You know, like people who just get their... You know, I I love my my sci-fi television shows and all that stuff, and that stuff's pretty continuing yeah, as yeah, it yeah. normally does. And there's some great shit that's come out this year, but man, do I feel bad for those guys that aren't getting that this year. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? I mean, that are really missing that that thing that buoys that buoys them up. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. That's sort so, of moment so of lifting right there. So I've been doing some sports stuff for them. You know. Um, now this guy, that's another Oreo right there. Yeah. And this is the uh, Rawlings Conservatory. So you find, uh, how do you find the Rawlings Conservatory? So how do you create that screen? Do yeah, you, so you... I just go out and photograph it. Okay. Uh, run it through Photoshop, run the image through Photoshop. Um, I have kind of a technique uh, that's pretty different from most people for my for making my screens. Uh, most people are using like a, maybe they're using an arc light or a big light or something. I use the sun to burn my screens and I just have a huge piece of glass and you know, foam and I make the screen and it's all very uh, low tech, you know? Uh, that's one thing that I've been, you know, working with screen printing and not being, you know, I did take this vocational technical class in high school, but you know, there's like tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment that they use to create that stuff. So, um, so I have, um, you know, I've made my own, you know, I do like a lot of woodworking stuff. So I've made my own, my own things, my own uh, equipment, I sure. guess, yeah. and made sure that I could do it in the kitchen if I needed to. Uh, so yeah, I learned to use the sun to burn my screens and I get some great results with it. That's great. Um, yeah. yeah. 
So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, real quick, I want to I want to get this before our little time cuts out because I'm on a yeah. weird sort of time and I'm worried I'll, I'll lose it. So a couple of things. Amuse at Home, October uh, 17th to 24th. And of course, the amuseartfair.com. I'm here with uh, Matt Muirhead uh, going through his art right now. Matt, in case we do have to end this recording here, places yeah. where people can find you. You've mentioned Instagram already. You've got a website. Yeah. Uh, that is, I think, just your name. Is that right? Yep, dot co. Dot co. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then your music. Where do people find the music element? Uh, so you can go to at Muirhead Music. Okay. Uh, Instagram. Um, you know, if you go to my website, it's got all my social media stuff listed. Oh, great. Perfect. Um, but at Matt Muirhead Artist is my um, my Instagram account. Uh, so follow me there. I. You know, I don't, uh, that, that Instagram account is just artwork. That's all you'll see is just pictures of artwork on there. I keep it pretty straight up. Um, you know, if you want to know about my, my life, my private Instagram account is at Muirhead Life. Okay. You know, only, only follow that if you want to see my cute little one-year-old boy yeah. eating, eating jelly or whatever he does, you know? <laughs> well, we are, we are um, hard-hitting questions here on this Q and A interview. By the way, we've already gotten your personal Instagram. I feel like I can shut this down right now. We're good. Uh, well, point. you know, I mean, <laughs> it's ten minutes now. You know, this is a lifetime for some people. How, um, if people are interested in doing uh, portraiture work, are you currently yeah. accepting uh, new pieces? Are you taking a new? Totally. Clients? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I just got a bunch of them done, and so uh, the docket's pretty clear right now uh, for stuff that's going to be delivered uh, before Christmas. Okay. Um, you know, usually the cutoff. You know, depending on how many I've got, the cutoff can be. You know, typically the cutoff is earlier because I have so many Christmas markets and stuff right. like that. But uh, this year, I, I don't think I'm doing any. Uh, so I'm not doing any. <laughs> <laughs> and what if a, if someone that. was interested in that, they would send you a photo yeah. and stuff of your I, uh, of the animals that they were interested in. Yeah, I've got some pretty specific criteria for the way I want the photos done. Typically, I used to go to the person's house and I would photograph their pet, but um, times being as they are, uh, yeah, I just um, but there, I've got a whole blurb about that on my website that that they can go to and read and sort of get an idea for how it all works. Cool. You know, as, yep. a, as the Alamo Draft House, the things that I've pulled from are the impressiveness of your work and the pop culture references that I'm seeing yep. in your work. I've, I saw a lot of my favorites. One of our last guests that we had uh, was um, Laura Palmer uh, from Twin Peaks. I came out huh. to the Alamo and hung out with us and oh, did screenings of awesome. Fire Walk with me uh, with her. And uh, I've seen quite a bit of Twin Peaks within some of your pieces that you've got yeah, love thing as well. What yeah. are you watching right now? What are you? What are the? What are the classic sci-fi or new sci-fi yeah. that you're discovering? Oh man, uh, like I'm a big Star Trek fan, so you know, uh, I think Star Trek Discovery's new season is coming out like Thursday. I'm like actually really excited for that. Uh, I just watched uh, Raised by Wolves on yep. HBO Max, and that was crazy. Yeah, just crazy shit. I'm watching this show that is uh terrifying me right now called utopia oh yeah, that yeah that's amazon prime right there is that it, right the prime thing it's uh it's all pandemic related and it's terrifying it has to do you with know, a comic is that right or a graphic artist i think it's uh, like a graphic novel or something okay. yeah man yeah it's so violent i'm sort of horrified by a lot of the violence uh in there so i don't know if i can continue that one but um well, I'll tell you, you we know, just screened... uh, Stranger Things is coming out. That's oh, yeah. a blast. I do love the 80s. Yeah. You know, music, film, uh, you know, like Donnie Darko. I can't, Im you know, I can't imagine a more relevant film to the, the sort of things that I'm seeing right now uh, than Donnie Darko. That movie was, you know, uh, uh, you know, it was post 80s but all about the 80s all about the 80s vibe and it sort of like ushered in this appreciation for the 80s that i was just like i ate it up man and i i have to tell you last weekend we screened richard kelly's second film uh Sound Tail? Tales, uh, oh, the Alamo. and i, I have to that. tell you very underrated film have you watched that recently he got some things um, like right 
that are happening now that's weirdly like I watched it like two years ago i think uh for like the third time uh it's really good one of my yeah. favorites you know and, and all the post uh, all the snl alum in it it's just it's great and yeah. how much of that is actually happening right now is the terrifying part to it right? yeah so, yeah the um, you know corporate police and the you know the hollywood uh, reality yeah. stuff stuff yeah <laughs> uh, i know no, TV. yeah that's it's terrifying fair. can you uh do you have a piece that you're uh, you showed us one that you were still working on do you have a few other pieces that you can show us that you're currently in progress uh i'd love to get a few more before we we have to wrap this this is uh the african-american museum in oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um let's see I'll show you some of these prints here because they're fun. Oh, yeah, this yeah. was uh, this was a pet portrait. This is Owen. He's a sweet cat. Um, and this is like the old uh, pharmacy. I don't know if you've ever been to Hamden. Oh, yeah. Where, where are you located? I'm, we're where here in Winchester, uh, uh, okay. which is where you probably would have had to come if you were doing the, the actual fair and that sort of thing as well. Yes, so. yes. I, the only thing I've done in Winchester is Shakemore Festival. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which I've actually uh, performed at like the last uh, like three or four years. Let's see, here's another one here. Yeah. Uh, you know, man, I do love those old landscapes, you know, and, and the flowers actually. So I do a lot of stuff with flowers. Okay. And, you know, especially like the more classical, the arrangement, the better for me. And so, yeah, that's actually, this is probably my top selling print right there. So Just, can I ask you, what is Mushroom City? Mushroom City Art Festival. Yeah, that's- uh, Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I've, it's something I've been involved with for a while. It's a friend of mine, Robin, uh, runs it. Um, I, I usually just make the shirts for it okay, um, and sell the shirts for it. But it's kind of, um, you know, it's sort of all things mushroom, you okay. know, uh, whether it's uh, soil remediation or health and medicine or psychedelic trips. Sure, sure. <laughs> Runs the gamut, but it's cool. just like a full on appreciation. It's a really fun time. And is that, is that happening? this year or did that go virtual it went virtual this okay. year yeah it was like uh two weeks ago okay okay i was I happened to be going through your site and i ran across those t-shirts and that was the only yep. t-shirt i saw so i was like what where does this have the connection to it and that's yeah you know so. i do ah, man uh doing sh art shows and stuff i've done all kinds of i've tried all kinds of things doing clothes and t-shirts and prints and stuff t-shirts it's hard you know you got to buy the shirt it's you know it's a little bit expensive you want decent shirts uh you know and then you gotta have the right size right, right. color the whole thing so uh, but i am actually i got some more shirts recently and i'm thinking of doing a design i haven't decided what i'm gonna do yet that's cool well you yeah. heard it here first on this breaking q a that we've been having here <laughs> uh matt i'm gonna wrap up i think i you know yeah. i didn't follow any of the q a that kim had sent over so that's fantastic we try to live Great. in our own moment and that sort of thing as yeah. well uh any last words for folks who are watching this for the first time and and have discovered you any any sort of lasting uh phrase or comment do you do you find yourself running out of shows with a, a catchphrase or anything <laughs> oh man. i just hope i can see i just hope i can see y'all sometime soon we look forward to it oh. man breaking my heart to just uh to not be getting out uh you know behind my table at art fairs and stuff so you know i just i just hope it's over soon and we can yeah. get back together again you know well we will welcome you anytime down here to the Alabama yeah. draft house uh yeah, here in winchester I'm not, I'm not like a big uh, you know i don't drink that much but um don't need to you just come and watch the movies and 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 meet you in person and and shake your hand it would be a genuine pleasure no question about yeah. that. yeah uh, uh ladies and gentlemen matt muirhead you find him online uh through mattmuirhead.co again one more time amuse at home october 17th through the 27th amuseartfair.com who do we have here matt this is cat oh <laughs> i love the creative name you've given your cat. <laughs> I know, right? 
Yeah, he's so creative. What did he name his cat? Yeah, just cat. I don't know. Yeah, it's simple right there. <laughs> How old's cat? Uh, she's about 11. I like that. I have, uh, if you yeah. give me one moment here. Oh, you have a cat too? <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful cat. Look yeah. at you. Yeah, it's a little harder because he blends into the uh, background <laughs> yeah. a little bit there. Uh, but that's Grover was fast asleep right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, cat also fast asleep. She I isn't mine. Well, fa yeah. fast asleep on your shoulder. That's pretty good right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been amazing. I am going to stop.